Well, although I'm sure you're probably getting a little bored of them at this point, this is UXW Bill's Kitchen Table Electronics Repair once again. The patient today is a Sony PSLX520 Linear Tracking Fully Automatic Stereo Turntable. Now, I was out and about the other day doing my little part to support public television and radio at a used audio equipment sale. I hadn't been in a couple of years, but I'd been kind of thinking that I wanted to go back and um, I kind of half-heartedly wanted a turntable for the stereo system over at the Roach Palace because I do have a record collection and I do play some records from time to time. Well, by the time I got there, I got there late in the day so as to catch everything half price and I ended up buying a bunch of stuff, bought about eight cassettes, a four-pack of some classical music cassettes, a bunch of interconnection cables, a piece of coax, a bunch of power cords, stuff like that, and a little stereo receiver that I'll talk about later. Anyway, the collection of turntables they had was really pretty sad. And the guy, had to, the guy who was there selling the equipment had to do a pretty fair sell job to get me to take this Sony turntable. But in retrospect, I'm glad that he did because it turns out that this, this is a pretty nice turntable, but it was woefully neglected by its previous owner. In fact, this uh, black surface right now, it was covered in so much mold and garbage that this thing was practically white in color. In fact, you might be able to kind of see what I'm talking about in that little crack right there, just how incredibly filthy this thing was. The problem with this thing, as it was described to me, was that the table would run just fine, but the stylus would never come out. It would never come away from the parking position. So I set it up, and I turned it on, and I found out that, indeed, that was true. The turntable came up to speed. The quartz lock came on. Everything seemed to be happening except the uh, stylus and tone arm over there would never come out. Well, this is a linear tracking turntable, and basically what that means, what that means is that the turntable tone arm rides on this carriage straight across the record as opposed to being at an angle. Now, there's a little bit of play in this tone arm right here. You can see that right there. And that lets the thing track the record, and when it needs a little more, when it needs a little more leeway, there seems to be some kind of a trip switch that causes a little belt-driven motor that drives a worm gear, drives a cam, and in turn drives this unit out across the record just a piece at a time. Likewise, it also drives it out when you're using these back and forward buttons to move the, move the tone arm to the particular song that you'd like to hear. And for whatever reason, that just never happened. Well, I figured out what was wrong. I gave it a little help. I gave it a little push with my finger, and it actually came out and started to try to play the record that was on it at the time. Well, it got through the record, and it got to about the third song before it started skipping and sticking. And then I found out that giving it a little more help, just a very gentle push to avoid damaging the record, would let it go a little further. And it got better and better, but it was never 100% right. So I turned my attention to this little track in here that the tone arm rides on. Well, it turns out it was covered in caked and dried grease. So I cleaned all that out of there, and I very sparingly re-greased it, just using a little bit of grease out of a grease gun tube. A very, very little bit. It didn't take much. And now it plays records absolutely flawlessly. And it's a, it's a very nice table. It's got automatic record size detection, plays 45s and 33s. It's fully automatic. It can repeat play a record. It's really a very nice table. It even has automatic size detection for 12-inch um, and 7-inch records, which is very nice. And the way they do that is kind of ingenious. There's a board underneath this turntable that has two light-emitting diodes and receivers on it. And there's these little holes in the slip mat here that have to be lined up with the corresponding holes in the metal turntable in order for this to work. But when you put a record on here, if it blocks both, both sets of holes, then the, player, the player's logic assumes that it's playing a 12-inch record. If it only blocks one set of holes, then it assumes it's playing a 7-inch record or a single. Anyway, this is a direct drive table. The date codes on the components inside it put it, I'd say, sometime around 1987 or so, the middle of 1987. And now, now it's playing just beautifully. There's really only one question I have about it. I have another table that bears this symbol right here that you can kind of see. It's a Technics table with a conventional manually operated tone arm and stylus. And I'm not sure what that symbol means, but this is the second table I've ever had that has it. 
And along with that symbol, I have noticed a complete lack of any anti-skating, tracking adjustments, tone arm weight, what have you. So I don't know if that symbol means that that's somehow automatically determined or what, but if anybody knows what that symbol means, please leave a comment. Anyway, now for the moment that you've all been waiting for. I just turned the stereo on here. Picked up that set of speakers too for $15, a set of Sony floor standing speakers, and there is nothing wrong with them. In fact, apart from some scuffing on the cabinet, it looks like they've hardly ever been used. Well, let's see how this thing happens to sound. You just press this button here, and it starts turning. Quartz lock comes on, moves the tone arm into place, and it starts to play. Anyway, you can lift the uh, tone arm off the record, and you use these directional buttons to cue it. So we can pick a song towards the end here, put the tone arm down. Lift it up again. We'll take it out here to the end of the record so you can see the uh, conclusion of the automatic operation here. There's the automatic shut off, and it just slowly runs itself back home again. So, in the end, for about a $2 bill, I got myself a rather nice turntable. In fact, I'd say a very nice turntable. I'm really baffled why someone would take such poor care of it over the years. It's obvious that it wasn't a cheap table to buy. Anyway, it's working fine now, and all I have to do, I even the amazingly, this uh, clear plastic dust cover isn't cracked. So all I've got to do is try to polish it up a little bit to take this scratch out of it. And then it ought to be just absolutely perfect and I'll take it over to the Roach Palace and enjoy it hopefully for many years to come.